Hey everyone, welcome back. Today we're going to be looking at a new build of Radeon Pro Render for Blender and more specifically a render setting that I haven't really been talking about a whole lot. I call it new because it's basically set to a point now where I think it is worth using and there's some really cool stuff going on with it. Before we begin, it would be super awesome if you guys could give me a like and subscribe to the channel if you like the content that you're seeing here. And for those of you who are interested in supporting the channel, you could become a member and you can also jump into the Patreon, which is available in the links down below and also links on my YouTube page. And you can see all the benefits there that you can get from that. And the other thing is that you will need to make sure that you have the weekly development build, which is going to be linked below in the video description. And you can see it right here. Also, if you do end up wanting to, you can download the project file that I'm gonna be using here in this tutorial. And in there, I provide the weekly development build from ProRender that I actually use inside of that download. So if you want, you can see that link also to the Gumroad file down in the video description as well. So let's get into Blender here and you can see I've got a pretty simple scene. This is from a decently known fluid simulation that I've done, but this is just a frozen still frame right here. There's no animation going on, so it makes the file a lot easier for everybody to download and check it out. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be looking at the render setting. If you turn on Radeon Pro Render and you go into the quality setting, you can see here that I have it set to interactive. I've used this before, probably in a couple tutorials where I was just kind of using it while I was changing some things. And I noticed that there were some bugs going on and I really didn't see much of a benefit to use it because there were some really strange things that were going on with it. And it didn't really feel uh, fully developed at that point, at least in my opinion, to really talk that much in depth about it. But if we take a look at this new build and we look at the rendered view here in the viewport, and if you're familiar with ProRender, you'll notice that the update in the viewport here is a lot faster than it was before. And what's really awesome about that is you can see that the quality in the glass material that I have here also looks really, really nice. And this just kind of happened when I was just sort of poking around. And you can see that there's some still buggy stuff going on. If I start moving around too much, you can see that there's this black stuff going on here. If I just reset the viewport here, I can resolve those sort of weird inconsistencies. And you can see there that it will come back if you keep sort of like moving around, you'll see that some of that shows up, but you can just reset the viewport and it will resolve that issue. But if we just take a look at the rendered view right here in the camera, you can see that the quality is actually really, really nice, especially when you compare to cycles. And if I turn on cycles really quick, and I have this set up inside the file as well, so you can make some comparisons. You can see that I have a fluid simulation. I did do a couple things to try and match the coloring and all that kind of stuff. But um, to me, the way that Cycles automatically renders fluids uh, doesn't usually look good to me. And I've always had an issue with it. And you can see here that with the background, the way that it is, if you just sort of, you know, take a look at it, it's um, kind of like uh, it looks a lot thicker than it really should compared to uh, the way that ProRender does it. And you have to do some other things with the materials to get it to look a little bit better by adding some transparency and some things like that. And it doesn't look terrible or anything like that. Um, you know, Cycles has some really great things about it and it's very, very fast. In fact, the interactive render with it being as fast as it is, is about the same as how Cycles renders. It's just to me, RPR when it comes to rendering glass and things like that tends to look a lot nicer. Let's change this back over to ProRender. And you can see there that it just kind of looks better, at least in my opinion. I, I do think that it has a nicer look to it. So one thing that you have to know when it comes to using this particular new rendering system or this, uh, this new render, the interactive one, is that when we're looking at this and you start to change some of the materials, one, you'll notice that unlike some other uh, builds of ProRender, it does update. That's why it's called interactive, is that it actually updates some of your materials without you having to reset it. But you'll notice, as far as a negative, you'll notice that if you do change some of these, like the refraction absorption, you can see right here, there's actually a uh, absorption that should be rendered here, but it's not there. 
So if we change this, for example, to a red or something like that, and we change the absorption distance to a 0.1, you'll notice that nothing happens. And it's not really the viewer, because if we change this color, you can see that the color changed, which I think looks really cool. It's a really cool feature about ProRender is that, I don't know, just to me, glass and fluids tend to look really, really nice, just right out of the, uh, the box here with the RPR Uber node. And if we switch this over to the final render, and we look at this in the rendered view. You can see that there is a volume absorption there. And if we set this to a five or something like that to make it a little bit less apparent, there is sort of a coloring that you can see there. Or if we change this to a, a blue or something like that and change this to a 2.0 maybe, there is more volume absorption going on inside the actual fluid there. So, you know, not everything that you want may be in the interactive. And you could also see that the way that it's calculating the refractive elements is a lot nicer looking in the final render view or the final render quality. And uh, really, it needs to be up to you on what you think is passable for the kind of project. You can see here that the refractive elements are a little bit darker right in here. And just in general, there's just, you know, some things that are going to be a little bit different. And I'll put up the comparison right here so you could check it out. You can see that there is um, a little bit of difference between the two different render modes and all that. But really what I, I like to stress a lot on my channel, especially when looking at these other render engines is that you really need to pick the right tool for the job. What I really want to do is educate you all on just kind of like observing the differences and then when you can see a certain type of project that you want to do, you know when you start doing your materials which render engine you want to use based on its speed or the quality or any number of things that I outline in the demos that I do for you all. So one thing that I'd like to do now is just talk really quickly about denoising, which in ProRender, it does have some denoising stuff with the final that you can select on that will automatically do some of the denoising. But sometimes either that doesn't work as well as you'd like, or you'd like to see what it looks like without the denoise. And then in the interactive, you also want to be able to add that denoising, but it's not really available here. So what I want to show you really quick is if you go into your RPR passes right here, if you turn on the shading normal and the direct diffuse, once you render that out and we go into the compositing tab here, you can see that if you put the denoise node in your compositor, and again, this is all in the download on the uh, Gumroad project download file that you can see in the uh, video description down there, the links down there. You want to take all of these, pipe it into a denoise right here, and that's going to denoise your image for you. So it basically does the same thing as Cycles or any of those other programs that uses the um, Intel, the Open Intel denoising. It basically does the same thing as the Open Intel denoiser, and that's how you can get that result by just adding that node there and piping all of those in. So what's the point of any of this? You know, why would you do the non-final rendered? Well, if you're trying to send something to a client that has a fluid simulation or something like that, or even just a regular animation, and you just want to show your base materials or have it look a little bit nicer, you may want to use this method because you can render this out a lot faster than using the final render quality. And even when compared to something like LuxCore or something like that, that you may be using for the final, you might want to do some still frames of that and send that to them. But, you know, for the time being, if you just want to show them what it looks like currently and you just want to give them an idea about what it looks like without having to spend all of that time rendering, because, you know, when you are talking about an animation, you have to make sure that you multiply that time per frame by how many frames you have, right? So the difference between the interactive render and the final render is this right here. So you are over five times faster. So that means it's 500, more than 500% faster using the interactive render quality than using the final render quality. So you may ask yourself, like, is it worth it? Is it worth it? And I'll put up the comparison again on the screen here so you can take a look at it. Is it worth it to have that little bit of extra for the uh, render quality? Or is it better to have this rendered out extremely fast? 
So some of you may be asking, you know, like, what's the point? Why even bother using RPR for this specific thing? Like I said, this engine is uh, really, it's a, it's a preference thing. Some people like this. I tend to like it for certain things like fluid simulations because I think that certain materials just look better right out of the box inside of ProRender. But what's really cool about the interactive mode is that although there are some limitations, one of the really cool things about it and why I chose glass, you can see here that I have uh, the glass is applied to the Apple now. And you could do this on your own. This is not what's going to be on the Gumroad file. But basically, with the interactive mode, you're not limited like you are with Eevee, where nested refractive objects kind of start to cancel each other out, and you can't really see through them to see those other refractive objects. And just to prove a point, I also added this cylinder here uh, that has the refractive material on there. And you can see that the glass and the cylinder are visible and if I go at a certain angle we should be able to see the refract refraction of the splash here and the cylinder that's on the inside. So there's some really 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 great benefits that you can get from using this particular mode not just for building your materials and looking at your scene easily but also in a final render if you have something like a fluid simulation or something or a animation in general that can benefit from just rendering it super quick that's why you want to use this. So that's going to be it for this video. Hopefully you are able to open up this file, take a look at it, and get some really awesome results. And if you could, please leave a comment down below and let me know how things are going when using ProRender. And thanks a lot to all of my subscribers, to my YouTube members, and to my patrons. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much again. You really push me to make more content, and I appreciate all of you. Thanks so much, and I'll see you all next time on DJ Tutorials.